What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Vets Help. Thank you for tuning in. Um, today, we have a little bit more of an interesting topic. Um, as you know, you know, the last video I was making, it's, uh, it was in regards to the medical evaluation board. So what happens after the medical evaluation board? Oh, obviously, you're either returned to duty or at that point, you know, you are uh, separated from the military, whether it's through... Uh, separation with severance or whether it's uh medically retired in my case i was medically retired so i wanted to make this video to discuss with you um some key things because i know how it can be as you're getting out and the curiosity that's coming you know uh but i want to let you know um sometimes that this situation occurs most of the time, pretty much all the time that the situation occurs, it's inevitable. And when things are inevitable, it's something that's, you know, it's, it's, it's out of your control. Um, and when that happens, you don't really know how to prepare for it. You don't know how to prepare for it. A lot of times, um, you know, within myself, I was in the army for almost 10 years. That was the thing that I've known for almost 10 years. Some of us, we joined the military straight out of high school. We never worked. We never had a job or anything like that until we joined the military. So that's pretty much the only thing that we've known. Um, like I said, I did, I, I did almost 10 years. Some of you may have done longer than that, 15, 20 years. And, you know, uh, you go through the medical evaluation board process or you just simply retire and you're planning on following uh, benefits. I want to let you know that just because you hit 20 years doesn't mean that you're disqualified from a medical evaluation board. Some people hit 20 years and they are still um, recommended to the medical evaluation board. But either way, regardless of whatever, you know, whichever one of those facets, whichever way you get out, um, there, I, I, the point of this video is to let you know, and you can see in the title, there is life after the military. A lot of service members, whether young, old, you know, they've been in the military for so many years. And that's why I wanted to mention that, because I think that a lot of times we get spoiled by the military and we couldn't see a better life outside of the military. But I want to let you know that there is life after the military. Um, in this segment, we're going to be talking about a few of those things, and I want to carry this into a series to continue to keep this going so that we can discuss a number of topics. Um, and I want you to all to stay tuned in and to continue listening because this stuff is very important, you know, as, and I will tell you this, as I started to, to come to the, to the time that I was getting out of the army um, things started to become a little bit more realistic to me, more surreal. I started to really feel it. I started to get a little bit more anxiety. I even started to panic a little bit, regardless of everything that I've put into my, uh, personal, um, development. I was getting my bachelor's degree. I was working on my master's degree. I had been in school from the time that I joined the military. I was gaining so much career experience. You know, I, I became an NCO. I was a staff sergeant. I was, you know, working within uh, positions of, you know, of, of, of authority, things like that, things that could really assist you in your resume. But I was still I was still nervous because I didn't know what to expect on the outside. And it wasn't even just about employment. It was just about life in general. How would I interact with civilians? How can I relate to civilian life? Things like that. Um, so that's that's stuff that we're going to cover in these videos, because I know a lot of you, you are having trouble right now with those same exact things. So with these video series that I'm going to be uh, putting out and um, going forward, we're going to be discussing a lot. Excuse me. We're going to be discussing a, a lot of different topics. One that we're going to discuss tonight is going to be job search, resume building. You know, finding a job if you plan on working, applying for school, 
that's going to be a couple of the topics. Excuse me, not one, but we're going to talk about, excuse me, I said one. We're going to be talking about <laughs> a couple different topics. Those are going to be probably about three different topics that we're going to talk about. Um, so I want you all to know, I want to encourage you to continue your pursuit to happiness. All right. Continue your pursuit to, um, to, um, um, <clears throat> excuse me, to your transition. You've put in the work, you put in your military service, you've rendered your services to the military. And now it's time for you to pay yourself back. You know, um, and I want you to understand that there is life after the military. The military is not going to be everything. It's not everything. It's been the most things that you've been accustomed to within your life as of late and as of previously and probably since you've been grown. But I will tell you, there is life after the military. So let's talk about it. All right. So let's talk about... um. Let's talk about job search and resume building. All right. So, um, as you know, leading up to getting out of the military, every service member, um, as an act of Congress, uh, you're required to go through a program, um, called, uh, soldier, f well, f for the army, I know at least, uh, soldier for life transition assistance program. This program provides you with a lot of different opportunities, a lot of different benefits, a lot of different things to assist you with um, the process of getting out of the army. Um, you can go through different in internships, do a career skills program, which the army has, or um, skill bridge, which the military uses. You can go through a lot of those different programs in order to um, find yourself in uh, apprenticeships, internships, and things like that within different companies. And also um, getting hired on, you know, if they decide that they want to bring you on, then they can bring you on to the company. You can find some different skills, some training and things like that. Um, I will recommend that you do this. If you plan on doing this, uh, you should talk to your commander within about six months or no, excuse me, within about eight to nine months prior to you getting out. Because a lot of these programs, they are roughly around about six months long you know uh for you to for you to participate in these programs so it might take a little bit of time for everything to be processed for you to be able to get out and and go through that um and the medical evaluation board is very complicated because going through a program such as skill bridge can be very difficult for you to be able to go through just because everything is so subjective so relative to time uh, you know, you don't really know whether or not, okay, when am I getting out? When is this going to happen? I don't know when my final date is going to be. I don't, excuse me, I don't have a real time schedule, so I don't really know. So, um, you know, if you have the opportunity to do it, I recommend you doing it. Um, skill bridge can be a great opportunity for you to land a great job, um, you know, it, it's a great opportunity for you to gain some skills while you're still going to school. You know, who knows? You might have only six months left to to graduate. So, you know, if you're going to school online, which most of us active duty service members are doing, um, Skill Bridge or, you know, Army Career Skills Program can be of great assistance to do something like that. All right. Um, but let's talk building your resume. That's part of building, building your resume. That's part of gaining the skills that are necessary and required to, um, you know, accustom yourself to civilian life and give yourself what civilian employees are looking for. A lot of us, we don't really realize um, how to really do that. Um, since I've, I've gotten out of the army, um, and even actually when I was on terminal leave, I ended up landing a job um, working as a senior workforce development consultant and recruiter for a company um, uh, that, that supports the federal government. Um, I was able to do that. It wasn't it wasn't a it wasn't networking. It was just based on me um maneuvering, you know, in in some things and in, in my resume like uh just changing up my resume, shifting it up a bit. Um 
what I will tell you is most important is if the companies that, that you are applying for are asking for certain skill sets, make sure that if you have those skill sets, make sure that they are mentioned in the resume that you sent to that particular company. I know some of you are looking like, oh my God, I really don't want to go through changing up my resume every time I apply for a job. I apply for like over... 150 jobs, 200 jobs, but I'm telling you it's going to work to your benefit. If there's a job that you see that you think that you would definitely qualify for and you really like it, I think that it's very important that you go in there and you you change up your resume, okay? And see where it hits. But I'm telling you, that could be the difference between you getting into an interview and possibly getting hired or even getting hired to you not getting in an interview at all. Um, I worked in military um, in, in army recruiting. And now I work in uh, corporate recruiting within the organization that I work in. So I understand a little bit more of what, you know, the, 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 the corporate recruiting world and what the, the, the civilian recruiting side of things they really look for. And um, I, I will tell you this, you know, uh, in, in a lot of companies, we don't have the opportunity. We don't have the time to really scope through all of the resumes and the the sites that you that uh you use to apply for different jobs such as indeed or monster and stuff like that they don't really um they don't really um filter your resumes to meet the demands of what that particular uh client i.e the company is looking for so i want you to understand that but when, so when we go through your resumes we might can click control F or something like that and look for a particular skill set that we need in order to fill a particular vacancy. This is a look, this is gems that I'm spitting right now. So I need for you all to understand <laughs> when you're listening to this right here, use it, use it, because I'm telling you right now, you know, a lot of companies, this is what this, this is the type of skill set we're looking for. If you're if you have it then put it on your resume. Don't lie on your resume. You know what I mean? It makes things a lot easier. You know, um, whenever you apply for jobs that you actually qualify for, you know what I mean? Uh, it makes it easier on the company and it makes it easier on yourself because you will find yourself looking for another job. I will tell you that right now. You will find yourself looking for another job because companies can't afford to waste money, especially even after COVID. All right. Um, so yeah, build your resume. If you if you need tips on building your resume, if you want to add different things to your resume and stuff like that, hit up friends, hit up people that you know that got out of the military. One of the key key things that you can use, hit up people that you know that are, that are already out of the military, um, that can give you advice on building a resume. Have them send you your resume. Hit up family members that have jobs within the civilian sector. See what, how their resume is formatted. You know what I mean? Even if, it's, if you 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 both don't have the same skill set, just see how their resume is formatted. A resume at the most should be about two pages. Two pages. A resume should be about two pages. Maybe, maybe it all depends on the job that you're that you uh you excuse me I qualify, but the job that you're applying for. Maybe three. Maybe three. Maybe three, but like I said, you, you, listen, you know, there's a short stint of time that we have to look over everybody's resume. We might, you know, you, you might have, you might have 200 people that are applying for the same job, but you are that one that end up getting it and you making little tweaks and things like that to your resume could be the difference of you getting that job or not. Um, there's programs out there. I want to mention one, um, called uh american corporate partners um that's a program that you can look at through the uso Re make sure that if you are in college you reach out to your um your college career um department because they are also there to assist you um if you are being medically medically retired or medically separated you have vr and e um, which is vocational rehab a rehabilitation um an education program all right and they assist you in the job search and things like that so make sure you reach out to them also please if once you are getting ready to get out please set up go in as a veteran 
you have um um you have a uh, man i can't even think of the name of it um there is man you know what i don't even want to share it because i can't really think of the name of it right now but um uh there's there's some there's some opportunities through linkedin um to assist you know uh, as, as veterans i'm sorry and i you know i will try to see if i can get that information for you and uh you know listen if you want to go into the video uh you want to leave a comment and you want to you want to ask like what is that information that uh you were getting ready to put out about linkedin then i'll be sure to give it to you but um basically uh it's like a promotion uh you know um for linkedin it's i think it's called linkedin a premium account for linkedin uh and, and as a veteran uh you can get a, a free year of that of that um that 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 um that premium promotion for your linkedin account so take advantage of that be sure that you um make an account on linkedin and you go ahead up there and you put in um all of your experience and stuff like that any education build your linkedin go start doing and building connections and everything uh if you have uh three connections you know build it up to 30 and then start going to 90 and then start going to 300 all right so you know just just start boosting your network because your network that you're boosting um is going to help you and it's going to assist you in uh, finding jobs if you're having struggles with finding jobs so um it's a lot of different things that you can do there um with linkedin and, and, and just connections one thing that you can do that i will recommend one tip if you have interest in a certain career or a certain skill set say for instance uh uh, for me, I had an interest in HR, human resource management, talent acquisitions. Go to companies that you would like to work for. Go to their website. Go to their website and um, look for people that work for that particular company, that work within the department that you're looking for. Go there, connect with them. And see if you can set up an information interview. Some of you may ask, what is an information interview? An information in interview is literally nothing more than you setting up a, a time where you can speak with someone that works in a particular apartment for a company that you're looking to, uh, to apply to and asking them questions about the, the, the company, the day-to-day -day, um, operations, you know, just asking them different questions about the department that you're working in, people that you're interfacing, all of that type of stuff. So you want to make sure that you reach out to them and ask them different questions it's an, and also connect with them. See if they'll send you their resume or, or, or ask them about the hiring process, different things that you, they were asked in the interview. I'm telling you, some people will, will agree to doing this. Some people you may not hear back from and some people just won't. They won't, they won't, they would, they'll say no, no things. But I'm telling you, um, you know, th that right there is a good help in getting into the doors because if you connect with certain people, they may know of a position that's coming open. Me particularly, I work within a department, you know what I mean? I, and I, I have, I have a specialty that, focuses on recruiting you know what i mean so within hr talent acquisitions and things like that i was able to connect with a lot of people that oh well you know i know that you know like you should you should apply for this you should apply for that not saying that it's always going to work but it might it might so that could be a good tool to use um let's talk about the, let's talk about the next one all right uh so we talked about resume building and um, find a job, find a job that you like if you plan to work. Let's talk about that. Find a job that you like. 
don't just go out and get a job. Some of you get out and be like, oh, well, I just want to work here or I'll just work here or something like that. No, man, you render your services to the military. OK, you rented your services to the military. Some of the things you, you've done, you enjoy doing it and others. You all know what I mean? You didn't really enjoy doing it. Um, and, you know, it, it, it was just it was just stressful. Don't work for an organization that's going to cause you organizational burnout. Don't work for a company that is not going to be beneficial or it's going to cause a disservice to your disabilities. Work for a company that you find happiness in, that you're not going to get bored at. Because some of you, you get out and, you know, you just look for an occupation. You look for something to do. Find something that's going to make you happy. I don't care if it's, you know, working as a CEO or, you know, you're working at a barista <laughs> Star as a barista in Starbucks. I don't care. You know what I mean? If, if it makes you happy, if you're working as a Walmart door greeter, if that what that's what's ma what makes you happy, as long as you are capable of surviving, you're capable of surviving, you're capable of paying your own bills, doing all of that stuff that you need to do in order to make sure that you're able to sustain as a, uh, as a, a as a uh, retired or a separated veteran service member, then do it. Do it. Don't go find no job that's going to continue to stress you out and continue to, you know, to keep you away from, you know, just life or your identity because that's what you're trying to gain here. Don't do that. Find a job that's going to help you to just enjoy your life, man. It, it's about enjoying life. It's about enjoying life. It's about enjoying life. So we want to talk about that. Find a job that makes you happy.